Hey everybody, it's Dave Dugdale, learningdslrvideo.com. So this is part two of this video of the Nebula 4000 Lite. Uh, for the first video, if you want to go back and watch it, was kind of me, you know, setting this up, like, you know, putting, making sure that the roll was at 45 degree angle and all the other ones. Um, I've taken the camera off, tried a few different configurations. I tried to actually flip the screen out so it would go the other direction, but it doesn't work with the GH4. There's just, you can't physically mount the camera onto it going that way. Also, I saw a lot of the comments that came in on YouTube and people were saying, boy, it looks like a real hassle to set up, but I've disassembled everything, put it back together again. Well, you know, got took the camera off and rebalanced it. And now I can do it much, much faster. Uh, I think I've got it balanced pretty well. And then the, the thing that I did this morning is I took a level to my desk to make sure it was level. And then I took these two blocks of wood and I, basically mounted them right here and you'll see me in b-roll actually trying to set this up and if you press the button four times because the first three button presses are for three different modes but the fourth button press as the manual talks about does calibration of acceleration and then if you do it the fifth time um, it does the calibration of the uh, gyroscope so the sensor or i guess the gyroscope is this little thing that's underneath the camera you probably can't see it but there's a little box mounted on that bottom plate so if you take two blocks of wood and you get the the plate at the bottom of the camera nice and level and press the button four times or five times to get all those things calibrated it did work even better after i did that right here you'll see that i've got the power connected i'm actually going to disconnect that because i've been testing it a lot. So what I do now, we're going to go into the software. All right, so we've done the four and the five button presses. And we've gotten that calibrated, which worked great, but I want to tweak even further. All right, so what we got here is um, what I got to do first is I'm going to take the USB cable and connect it to the back of the unit. You actually see it turn on, but it's kind of like this weird where it gets a little bit of power from it. it doesn't get a ton of power like this one, which charges the batteries, but this one actually um, gives it a little bit of power. So if I were to try to, I could feel the motors working while just the USB is powered. So it must provide a little power. I'm going to go up here and I hit um, connect. The, <clears throat> the port you said is not connected. So I got to go down here and select COM4. And there we go. And you could see I got real time data going on. So if I start turning this back and forth, you'll see that it's a, uh, it was all over the place. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually turn the power on of the unit, which I probably should have done first. Now I've got it's got more power because I think it was just getting power from the USB and it was very confused what was going on. So now you can see I'm rotating back and forth here, and let's see if I can remember which mode I'm in. So I'm going to actually let's go to mode number three. One, two, three. And you can see I'm rotating uh, my hand, but nothing's happening. And everything is staying nice and still, which is great. It's doing a fantastic job there. And also from the software, I can go up to here. If I want to go back to pro profile one, I can write and it'll go to here. And now when I start to move it, it'll start to pan. Or if I go, I want it to go up, it'll go up and the pitch will go down. So that's working. And right here, this is something that's, I think I just knocked the cable a little bit. So I'm actually have to disconnect. Oh, there it goes, it's writing again. Sometimes this connection is not very good on the USB port for some reason. So one of the things, I, there was a, a gentleman, I'll put a link to it like I did in the first blog post. So I'll link to this one guy has like an hour video of going through this whole thing. But one of the things I wanted to check that he was kind of checking, which I thought was a great idea, is how fast, you know, if there's any vibrations. And you can see there's like no vibrations because if you'd see vibrations, if I would tap on, tap on this just a little bit, you can see that vibration and see how it's dampened and how quickly it rests. So if I were to really take it, you can see how fast it comes back. You see the roll axis or if I tilt it, or if I push down on the front of the lens, you can see how quickly it comes back and it's not vibrating. So I think our settings are pretty good. So there was a gentleman, I don't think he wants me to give out his real name because he used Rusty Lens on one of the forums. 
um, but he gave me his settings um, right here. So what I was thinking of doing, sorry, I should have turned this off before I started. Again, this is just for my second channel, so I'm not gonna do a whole bunch of editing on this video. So what I'm gonna do now is, on, on the, these are my settings, which I've already gone and, and saved, but here's profile one, you got the PID settings. From what I understand, the only ones you really should touch are the P and the D and the power. And here we can go through all the different settings here. There's profile two and profile three, which is pretty much locked off. And you can see kind of the differences that are going on between the three profiles. So I think it's pretty well calibrated right now. What I'm gonna probably do is I've got a fence along my backyard here, and I'm gonna probably put it in a bad situation where um, make it really hard on it to, to, I'm gonna actually zoom in a little bit on my zoom lens and walk along the fence. So you're gonna actually see, you'll probably see my footsteps going up and down. So what I was gonna do is kind of demonstrate that um, cause that's kind of like the worst case scenario. Cause what I want to try to do is get this thing, um, as smoothed out or dampened out as much as I can when I walk. So I have a nice smooth, even shot. And again, I am brand new to this. Um, I've never had one of these devices before, but I think the kind of the Holy grail is to get that really smooth walking motion. And from there you can do lots of other camera moves, which I'm going to actually demonstrate probably later, but I can tell you right now, the footage that I've seen off this thing is so much better than I could get off any glide cam device that I've tried over the years and that I own. Um, it's, it's far better from my perspective. And I know a lot of people, like I said before, had watched that first video I did and said, man, that looks like such a hassle to balance. Well, yeah, it took me like an hour to do the balance that, but now I can do it in like five minutes. I know exactly what's going on and I can balance it quite quickly maybe five, 10 minutes. It doesn't take that long um, knowing the GH4 in this particular lens. If I were to put a new lens on there, I bet you I could rebalance it in like seven, 10 minutes. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna cut and I'll probably do a demo of along the fence. Maybe we'll come back and then if it doesn't look that good, I'm gonna go and put in some of these other numbers this other person called Dusty Lens had suggested because he's been using the GH4 with a 12 to 35 for quite some time, maybe like a week or two longer than me, but he's, he's had some settings. So I'd like to try those to see if they're any bit or any smoother. I see snow up on the mountains. All right, this is my regular walk.
All right, this is my smooth walk. All right, this is my walk with my elbow locked in. I don't think that's helping. This is with my elbow kind of out. It's snowing. And this is in uh, mode number one. This is my smooth walk. This is my regular walk. And we'll start running. And this is a run. And let's try another run. And this is another run. <laughs> Quick stop. So in that clip, I saw a little bit of stuff going on with the roll, maybe a little bit of jitter, especially in the corners, at least to my untrained eye, I saw that. So I might play with the power settings on that. So I'm gonna show you next is slow motion, which is kind of cheating because it makes everything look smooth and it makes me look like I'm really good at what I do. Um, you should never look at slow motion footage and make a determination on how smooth the device is because that's, it's like cheating. But I'm gonna show you how some um, footage here and there's not gonna be any audio because when I put it in variable frame rate on the GH4, the audio goes away. So go ahead and watch that. So right now it's really snowing hard outside. Um, I know when you saw it before it was just starting to snow, but now it's really snowing hard. And this thing doesn't really look like it is weather protected, especially from the USB port. So I'm gonna have to save the next part for another day where I play maybe with the, uh, the horizontal or the roll, M maybe apply a little bit more power or less power right there and see how that does. But so far I've been really impressed. So. Look out for video number three in the future when I do some more settings and I get into the other person's settings and actually try those. All right, talk to you guys later. Bye.